Okay, now we move on. One thing I want to point out before we even start doing analysis is you notice this phrase is basically homorhythmic homophony. This phrase is something else. Now this is an example of polyphony, but it's a bit different than the polyphony that we saw. But polyphony we saw before was first of all three voices. And this is only two voices. We've got one voice in the right hand, one voice in the left hand. The other thing is that this is really linear kinds of polyphony. The other is polyphony because each voice had a distinct quality to it. But this you would describe much more as counterpoint. Um, so like that uh, earlier when we elaborated uh, those two very simple melodic, uh, those two simple lines of nine bars into uh, a phrase that was for solo instrument and, and piano accompaniment, that was what we call one-to-one -one counterpoint. And this is what we call two-to-one, which makes sense, right? Um, we call this, or second species counterpoint, you've got two notes against one note. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to actually do this because I think, you know, it would be fun for you to give a, give a go at doing some basic two-to-one counterpoint. Clearly, we have some kind of five chord here. So let's get our five in there. And then we have, well, this, this all looks like five. And then we add in this, which is, well, not an encore tone. It's actually the seventh, so, but now it's in the bass, so it's a 4-2 chord. And then we get one in first inversion. Look at this voice as being used to give us two notes, not just one note. So this gives us the third, this gives us the root and the fifth. Now we have two bars of five of some sort. So this is five, these are all, these are all chord tones. Um, and we analyze this as a 5-4-3, going to a 5-6-5, five, five, and then 1. You say, well, what about this guy? Well, that's actually just an accented appoggiatura. Again, accented, well, not accented appoggiatura. This is a, a suspension. This is our 7-6 suspension. Um, I'll explain that in a second, though. But just to say that our... For analysis purposes, these are our chord tones, this uh, A and this C. And that gives us, well, we're in minor, so that gives us a two diminished six. Going to four, six. Again, um, we need to look at, you know, which are our chord tones? What makes the most sense? It makes the most sense to analyze this as a passing tone. And then we get something we're going to talk about next week, and I'm just going to analyze it right now, um, just so you can see it. But you don't need to know this just yet. And then we get five, of course, because we get the half cadence. I write here five of five of five. That is, if we look at this, we see that we have A and C sharp. Well, if we added the E on top of that, we'd have an A major chord, but we're in the key of G minor. So that's like a two chord, but it's a major chord. In minor, it's supposed to be a diminished chord. So the question arises, how do we analyze this thing? What we see is actually this thing is going to the five chord, and this chord itself, an A major chord, is a fifth above the five chord. And so it functions as the dominant in first inversion, of the dominant. And that's where we get this. And we call it a five, in this case, we call it a five, six of five, or more generally, a five of five. It's the dominant of the dominant. Next week, we're gonna talk about these. Uh, I'll, I'll explain them. This is what we call a secondary dominant. Just for fun, I'll write that in. A secondary dominant. I'll talk more about it next week, like I said. But, um, but we do find these all over the place in classical music. Okay, let's analyze our non-chord tones then. Well, as I said, that this is a suspension, right? Because here's the chord tone, and how do we get into it? We do nothing. How do we get out of it? We move by step down. That's a suspension. Then we need to figure out what kind of suspension. Well, we measure it against the bass. The bass is a C, and this is a B, so that's a seventh. And it resolves down by step, so that's a six. So this is what we call the suspended the, the uh, uh, seven six suspension. Hmm. 
Then we have the four chord with a passing tone, step in, step out, same direction. And this five of five with a passing tone. This you might actually analyze as a seventh, um, but passing tone, analyze as a passing tone is acceptable as well. Okay, now what we need to do is, act, is scroll down a bit to get this fourth phrase, because the fourth phrase clearly is gonna be different when we get to the end. Right, because this gives us a half cadence and this gives us a perfect authentic cadence. So there's, um, there's gotta be some kind of change here. But what we see is in the very beginning, it is basically the same. So I'll do this fairly quickly. This is gonna be the same, five. We get our four, five, four, two here, one, six. Same thing, we have five, four, three, going to five, six, five, going to one. Again, all of our non-chord tones are the same. It's basically a repetition. Even this is a two diminished six. Oops, that looks a little bit funny. Let me fix that. Uh, this is a is a chord tone, so we just we don't have to analyze it. And and in such a in such a case, you know this this is really our bass note, and Beethoven's just decorating up like this. Some might say, oh well, then you have to analyze this as like a, a two diminished six four chord. No, you don't. Uh, we, ha we you know we're really getting the chord. Um, the the harmonic rhythm is 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 by beat, and so it makes sense to just keep the harmonic rhythm the same. Uh, there's no useful information given about the chord if we say that it's a 6-4 chord. Again, we need to analyze it as some kind of 6-4 chord. Is it a pedal 6-4, a passing 6-4, a cadential 6-4? It's none of the above. So in this case, we just say that it's, um, you know, it's just decoration. It's just the movement of the bass. This is going to give us a 1-6-4. Not so clear again, and this is going to give us 5 and then one, I'll just write this in very quickly, and we'll look at this. One, six, four, and you say, well, I'm not getting that because I'm getting five with a passing tone. Um, and then this is a one, six, four resolving down to a five. So the one, six, four takes place here, I get that. No, actually what's, what's going on here is that this is actually the, uh, you probably treat this as a suspension. So we get the, sorry, let's do non-chord tones just for this bar, because all this is the same, so we don't need to redo it. But just for this bar, well, this is going to be the same as before. Okay, but then we get this suspension. And how do we um, describe the suspension? Well, honestly, I, 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 I'm not going to try to. I'm just going to write down this suspension because we don't really have a thing called a 5-4 suspension. But this really is sounding like a 1-6-4. It's missing the B flat, but it's being hinted at. The 1-6-4 is being hinted at. So I just write this down as a suspension. And then we've got this carried over, which is a 4-3 suspension. Dud, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> no, uh, or sud, no, how about sus? Um, good. A 4-3 suspension. And then resolving here. This is how I would go about analyzing this. Um, again, there are theorists that would c come out and argue against this um, analysis. But I think when I listen to it, I really hear this 2 diminished 6 going to 1, 6, 4, going to 5, going to 1. And then I need to start explaining what's going on here. And this is how I would explain the non-chord tones here. There's one last thing I want to talk about. Some people might be a little confused. So I want to clear up any confusion. Well, I hope I can clear up confusion. I called this a half cadence. And then I went ahead and, I went ahead and said this was a secondary dominant. And this was the dominant going to the tonic. And so you say, you know, in a way, you say, well, this is the dominant going to the tonic. Isn't that a perfect authentic cadence? Or at least in this case, uh, well, this is in first inversion and this isn't the root. So we could say it's at least an imperfect authentic cadence. Shouldn't you analyze it that way? 
Uh, no, there will be times where that happens, but in this case, it doesn't make sense to do that. Why? We are not using this secondary dominant as a way to change key. You'll find actually in classical music, this is exactly how we do change keys through these, the use of secondary dominants. But here it's so brief and it's really just an act of chromaticism inside of the original key. When we get here, we really do hear this as a half cadence. And then we need to explain it as a half cadence. In this case, it makes more sense to think about this chord as a kind of altered two chord. And that it's, um, but in its alteration, it has this sort of secondary dominant um, function. And then we land here. We really do need to use our ears when we do analysis. There will be times where you'll see a bunch of these happening and then we get this and it sounds like uh, either an imperfect or a perfect authentic cadence. And then we need to analyze it as such. But when we land here, this really sounds like a half cadence. So it makes much more sense to analyze it as a half cadence.